They addressed their three biggest positions of need. They didn't move up to get Nolan Smith. They stayed where they were, and they took the Kansas City kid from K-State, Azuma, to be a defensive end. That's back-to-back first-round picks they've used on defensive end last year. They obviously had two thanks to the Tyree Kill trade. I liked Karloftis last year. <clears throat> we'll see what Azuma does. In the second round, they, they, according to the consensus boards, reached massively on Rasheed Rice, the wide receiver from SMU. Now, he was wildly productive in college, and they obviously liked him. I, I'm i not going to act like I scouted Rasheed Rice. I'm not a draft guy. We'll, I wanted them to go defensive end, wide receiver, or wide receiver, defensive end in that order. They did. They just got to be right on the player. And then they took an upside tackle in Wanya Morris. And again, they traded up in the second and third round to target both of those guys. So those were clearly players they really wanted. And so then you just got to see if they end up being, you know, last year they crushed the draft. Only Seattle had a better draft than them last year. So you got to wait and see. They did address their biggest positions of need. Now, I do want to spend a couple minutes here talking about the other big stories of the draft, okay? I cannot overstate what a long-term disaster I think the Texans draft is going to prove to be. Everyone loved, I shouldn't say everyone, a lot of people loved it because they end up with their quarterback, C.J. Stroud, and the best defensive player, Will Anderson. The price they paid to go get Will Anderson in trading the 12th pick, the 33rd pick, and this is the most important part, Next year's number one pick is bananas. It's in the Texans could be the worst team in the league next year. They they traded away the number one pick of the draft. Or maybe the number one pick of the draft. Their number one pick. If the Texans loved Will Anderson that much. You could just stay at two, draft him at two, and then at 12, take another blue chip player like Christian Gonzalez or trade out of that pick, which you obviously could have, so you can draft Caleb Williams, who is a generational prospect next year, or Bryce May, or even if you just love C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud on this team, they're not going to be good next year. I can't believe the Cardinals. The Cardinals very like I shouldn't say likely. It is absolutely on the board that the Cardinals go into next year's draft with the first and second pick of the draft. They could be the worst team. The Texans could be the second worst team. So I thought the Cardinals crushed. I thought what the Texans did was bat crazy. And now I want to defend the Lions for a moment. All of my smart media friends, they're in agreement on one thing. The Lions draft was stupid. They they drafted these non-premium positions and they didn't get the value they needed. All of it. Here is my tepid defense of the Lions. I don't think drafting the second best running back in the draft at 12 is good strategy. I don't think drafting an inside backer at 18 is good strategy. I understand that. I think the Lions looked at it like this. They must have believed that Jameer Gibbs good enough in a normal draft to be far and away the best running back in a non B. John Robinson draft. Everyone agrees that Jack Campbell is the best inside linebacker. Everyone agrees that Brian Branch, the safety that they got in round two, is the best safety. And they must have fallen in love with Sam Laporta, a player I liked, but everyone was shocked that he went before Michael Meyer, but they had the opportunity. So I think they looked at this draft and said, with our first four picks, we can get the best 
or the second best player in the entire draft at four positions and instantly have for the next five years a top-level starting safety, a top-level starting tight end, a top-level starting inside backer, and our top-level running back. I understand the positional value part of it. I understand why, analytically speaking, it was not sound. But I also understand the Lions' perspective of, okay, we're sitting there at, where was there, uh, 45. We could get the seventh best receiver or the best safety. We're sitting there at 18. We could get the fifth best pass rusher or the best inside backer. We're sitting there at 12. We could get the fourth best offensive lineman or a running back we love. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I don't think it's as quite as insane as what seemingly everyone else in the analytical community thinks it is. So those were my big draft takeaways. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.